So what's going on guys? Yeah, my Dan Solar Junkie here again, and this is gonna be the new location of my multiple systems all running off one sump filtration. This system used to be in another part of the house. I had this 210, 229s underneath it, and I had the plumbing running through the wall into our office or den. My wife is working from home now, so that sump could get pretty noisy and was being distracting to her while she was at work. So that was another reason we decided to move it over into this entertainment nook. This entertainment nook is just barely over 14 feet wide. My 210 is 72 and a half inches wide, just over six foot. The 275s are just over four foot, 48 and a half inches wide. They barely fit in this nook. That's what we decided to do. This first video is gonna be an overview of kind of where I'm at so far, some of the equipment I'm gonna use, what I'm reusing from the old system, what I learned about the old system and improving from the old system to put into this one and some of the setbacks that I've encountered so far. So let's get to it. So the first thing I'm gonna go over is what I'm actually planning on putting in these aquariums. I do have eels that I really like, so they're gonna go into one of the 75s. I'm gonna have my main aggressive community tank in the 210. And this 75, I'm actually planning on putting a partition or possibly two partitions in this aquarium to separate it into three isolated areas. The reason for that is to allow me to have more variety with what I can actually put in this system. A lot of times with salt water, you get fish that just don't get along. So you bought it, you put it in here, he's getting beat up or he's beating up on somebody else and you have nowhere to put it. This is gonna allow me to have some of those isolated areas to either move fish around if I need to. Uh, I also, back in the day when I first got started in the hobby, bought a carpet anemone, thought it was the coolest thing. I still do, I really miss my carpet anemone. I had him in my community tank and I slowly had fish disappearing, couldn't figure it out until I saw that carpet anemone poop out the skeleton of my bicolor angel at the time, I believe. So by separating this one out, it's just gonna give me a lot of more variety and some options if something's not going right in one of the main tanks that I have. So I really didn't have any major problems besides the noise level with the multiple systems all running off the sump filtration behind the wall. One of the benefits to having that sump behind the wall is everything was very accessible, very easy to get to for maintenance purposes. That is one of the main things that I lost when going with my filtration back underneath the aquariums. However, I did put these aquariums pretty high. Now this is about the same height that my 210 was at. And it's still got a pretty decent area as far as being able to get in underneath the stand. But the 275s, I wanted to make these nice and tall so I have plenty of access and I'm not gonna be smacking my head getting in there to maintain anything. So I did have another 75 for my eel in the office that did also run off that sump filtration. However, I had drilled the holes in the main display and they came off the side of the aquarium. Obviously that was not gonna work because of my tight tolerances with the way this system is. So I ended up going to Petco online and they had their basically 50% off sale on their aquariums. So I ended up buying 275s and 260s that I was gonna use for the sump underneath this system. I had problems with both of those equations. Those 60 gallon aquariums were a perfect size sump. They were low profile, which would leave you plenty of room to access and do maintenance on them. They have a large surface area as far as being 18 inches wide, four feet long. So they would handle plenty of take up water in case of a power loss on these three main displays. However, there is a problem. I would not be able to get one of those 60 gallon sumps out from underneath this stand without completely disassembling one of my main displays and the stand, move it out and pull it out through one of the sides here. There's too many times where I decide I need to upgrade something or mess with one of my sumps change the design of it and in order to do that to have to take one of the main displays down just wasn't an option. So I did end up going and exchanging those two 60 gallon sumps for 40 gallon breeders and I did calculate my water volume as far as take up and I do have the room in those 240s for that take up water. I'm also going to have my algae scrubber build that I did revamp a little bit, and this is gonna be an algae scrubber slash refugium that will also handle some take up in case there's an extra as well. Now, the two 75 gallon aquariums that I got from Petco that were gonna be my two main displays, I did test those to see if they were tempered and the front and back of the aquariums and the base were all tempered on both of those aquariums. So that left me no option as far as that goes. So they did take those back. I gave them my reason and they took them back without a problem. 
That being said, I ended up going to Ocean Floor in Phoenix, Arizona. Those are pretty good guys over there, and I do get a lot of my stuff through them. I bought 275s from them. They were obviously a lot more money, but they were pre-drilled, and that did eliminate some of my headache from having to go ahead and drill and provide overflows for those. They are already in the tanks. That leads me to my second setback as far as this system goes, guys. I did not give these aquariums a thorough checking before leaving the store. They actually took them out to my truck, put them in the back of the truck. All I did was strap them down and take off. So when I actually got home, I just put them in another part of my house, then finished my aquarium stands, building them, painting them. I went to put them up on the stand and there was this piece of packing tape left on this aquarium. I went to pull that off and look what I found. I have got a chip out of this glass and the piece of glass is behind that piece of tape. So I actually purchased these tanks on a Friday night. I didn't realize this happened till Saturday at about six o'clock in the evening. As soon as I saw that, I did call the ocean floor, talk to their manager. He had me send some pictures of this to his email. He said he was gonna talk to the person that loaded them and then we would see what's gonna happen from there. He is being pretty cool about it. I think it's not going to be a problem getting me an exchange, but again, you can see their aspect of it. They're thinking I did it. I know I didn't do it. So let this be a valuable lesson to you. I actually knew better and I just spaced it this time is make sure you give your tanks a thorough looking over before leaving the store that you're buying them from. So this video is already running pretty long guys. So I'm quickly going to do an overview of how I plan on setting up the actual filtration. And then in the next video, I'll probably go over how I constructed the stands, how I ran my electrical, and then we'll go on for future videos from there. If you do have any questions or comments on any other aspect that I haven't covered on this system, throw it in the comments and I will try to answer those questions in the future videos that are coming. So I'm gonna have the drains coming from all three of these main displays down into two reef mat 1200 filters. I absolutely love these filters. I've been running one on my 125 for about a month now. They do say they can handle 2,300 plus gallons per hour. However, I took the two pumps that I'm planning on running on this system and put them on that 125 and ran them on that. And going into the one reef mat, the water level was just barely below the level sensor and it was tripping that fleece roll to rotate every couple minutes. So being as though it would not handle that volume, I decided to go with two of these. So the water's gonna come down and go through those two roller mats into the 40 gallon breeder. Instead of having a baffle and this being all one sump, basically I'm gonna be drilling holes through the 40 gallon breeders, going over to the protein skimmer section of this 40 gallon breeder. Then I will have the air bubble trap and then my return section in the final part of that 40 gallon breeder. I'd be running two return pumps plus another pump for my algae scrubber and other things that we'll be putting a manifold on. Off of that manifold, I will be coming back over to my algae scrubber build here, which will be pumping in, going through the waterfall algae scrubbers down into a refugium. Water level is gonna be pretty low on this refugium because my algae scrubber mats come down to about here, but that is okay, because then I am still able to use part of this aquarium for take up water as well. Then I'll be drilling another hole and flowing the refugium back probably into the roller mat section of the sump just because that's the only place I can put it back to. And then my auto top off tank will be in that final part of that stand along with my electrical. So I actually have a separate circuit breaker ran for the electrical for this aquarium. I didn't want anything else risking whether it was gonna overload the circuit and shut down my system. So I will go over this in a little bit more detail in one of the other videos. And I also have my auto top off line ran here and so the bulk part of my electrical and my control will be over in this final section of the stand as well. So that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. As soon as I am finalized with all my plumbing and I know everything is working good, obviously I will be adding some cabinetry to the stands. We will be going all the way from the floor to the top of the entertainment nook. And since I have a lot of space above these aquariums in this nook, I am planning on putting a shelf up there to store a lot of my extra equipment so that space is not wasted as well. Obviously that will all be enclosed with the cabinet doors. The other thing I am a little bit concerned with is the noise level and where we are putting this in our house. So I do plan on insulating the cabinet doors to help retain some of that noise level. So 
So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and you will come on this journey with this build with me. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate it. Hit that like button if you found this interesting, and I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.